Do you remember what it's like to fly a kite? My brother and I loved it growing up. And so did the Planet A team. With a bit of tugging, pulling and running, the kite soon circled higher and higher. If only the string were long enough, maybe it would even fly so high you couldn't see it anymore. Higher than any building. It felt like it almost developed powers of its own. And that's because up there, there are winds that can carry way more than a small kite. Winds of unimaginable force. High altitude wind is the largest yet untapped source of renewable energy worldwide. Hundreds of meters above our heads, there is enough wind to generate more power than the world needs, if only we would harness it. So why don't we? To answer this, I'll tell you a story about brilliant ideas and failed attempts. Oh. Of a race to the sky, insane potential, corporate buyouts and passionate scientists. I will use the blackboard to explain that, if you agree. But first let me show you this. The more colors and lines you see on this map, the stronger the wind is. Here, that's the wind on the lower surface, which could spin a normal wind turbine as you know it. And this is wind several hundred meters above the ground. Notice anything? Exactly. Wind at higher altitudes tends to blow stronger and steadier. And this means more energy. How much more exactly? Well, this much. This equation says that with a doubling of wind speed, we can theoretically generate up to eight times more power. I can directly start why it fascinates me. So if you look at a conventional wind park, right? So you have these successful large-scale installations. This is Professor Moritz Diel. He's one of the experts on the topic and leading the Department of Microsystems, Engineering and Mathematics at the University of Freiburg. So you see all the sky above the, uh, the, the conventional turbines and you think all this wind energy is just blowing there and it's not used, right? If we could harvest those winds several hundred meters up there, we could potentially generate several times the energy than with wind turbines on the ground. And this gets us to the one question that has been haunting scientists and startups for decades. How do we do that? Building gigantic wind turbines as high as Dubai's Burj Khalifa tower isn't feasible. Oh, and just putting one on top isn't either. The winds up there are just too strong. But there are several ideas on how to get up there anyway. Tinkerers and passionate engineers have been building quite viable light windmills in their workshops. Some of them even founded small companies. A bigger operation launched in 2010. The US company Alteros came up with a generator attached to a helium balloon, a wind turbine without a heavy base and pillar. A cable connected it to the ground. It was tested in Alaska and supposed to harvest energy at up to 600 meters altitude. Around the same time, German company SkySails developed a high-altitude kite to pull entire container ships. The idea was to save diesel up to 10% according to its inventors. DW reported about this novelty back then, so get ready for a blast from the past. Das ist der erste Frachter, der mit einem Drachen über den Ozean fährt. Ja, im Moment ist das noch nicht so meine Sache. The test worked, but the captain's skepticism proved true. The shipping company went bankrupt and neither the ship kite nor the wind turbine ever entered the market. But both prototypes pointed to one thing. To harvest high altitude winds, you need flying power plants. Enter Google. In 2013, they bought the airborne wind energy company Makani for an undisclosed amount. For me, it was a very, very positive news. This is Stefan Brage. He is CEO of the German wind power company SkySails Power, the same company that tried to make ship pulling kites happen. That me meant that a big international player with uh, a lot of funds available um, was uh, starting to bet on this technology. With Google's money on board, Makani became the leading technology. Their flying power plant was about the size of a small aircraft. It climbed to an altitude of around 300 meters, where it circled in a continuous and automated loop. And they could actually use, so to say, the, the increased speed that you get from circling uh, in order to slow down the kite and harvest this energy, like little wind turbines on the kite. And I always thought this is a bit crazy because for the amounts of energy you would need enormous generator, they would be heavy and so on. But it turns out that with modern generators, this is a possibility. 
Only one device generated enough energy for 300 households, according to Makani. This seemed to be the breakthrough everyone had been waiting for. The documentary was shot, the attention was huge, but suddenly things took a turn for the worse. Suddenly the leader of, uh, I mean, leader at that time in the field was going down. This is Rishikesh Yoshi. He does research at the Faculty of Aerospace Engineering at the University of Delft. And when he says going down, he literally means going down. One drone crashed during a test on the sea. To everyone's surprise, Google's parent company Alphabet decided to drop the project in 2020, expressing doubts about the economic viability of the flying power drone. That definitely it was, uh, let's, let's, let's say, a shock because it was, uh, we expected that Google might uh, be supporting it till it reaches commercial viability. But, uh, but, but the good thing that happened is after Makani went down, it uh, made all the knowledge and all the data that they had open source. The end of Makani didn't spell the end of airborne wind energy. A new wave of startups has kept working on smaller and smaller devices that use less and less material. Some pursued Makani's approach, others attached that drone to a rope which tugs at a generator. And others did the same but replaced the drone with a kite. Among them is a familiar name, the German company Skysales Power. Today they are into electricity. Their device uses what's called a pumping cycle to create energy. The kite takes off automatically, directs itself against the wind and unwinds a rope from a generator. It flies in a figure eight, constantly tugging the rope and creating energy. The kite is supposed to fly for hours, days and weeks. Once attached, it takes off, flies and lands automatically and in bad weather or in dangerous conditions, it triggers an alarm and can be recovered. According to SkySales, it can create energy for up to 500 households using 90% less material than traditional wind turbines. It's also good for logistics, so you can bring these devices almost everywhere. You don't need um, large crane capacities, roads, infrastructure to bring these uh, systems to the people that need renewable power. Let's be clear though, there's nothing wrong with traditional wind turbines. They work, they're cheap at scale, and we urgently need more of them. But that's the thing. Airborne wind energy companies aren't here to replace turbines on the ground. They want to add to them. 1.4 billion people globally are living off-grid, and many of them currently power their homes with dirty diesel generators. These are devices which are much more flexible to operate. You could also operate them above woods. You could stop them operating and even land if there's a swarm of birds passing. It's still the early days, but SkySales sold their first device to Mauritius, where they plan to build an airborne wind energy hub for East Africa with a local investment company. The vision is to operate floating kite wind farms offshore. In many rural areas, SkySales says their kites can already outprice dirty fuel generators, and the industry sees an even brighter future ahead. In their own studies, they say airborne wind energy could become significantly cheaper than diesel and even cheaper than traditional wind energy. At the moment, you wouldn't see that because it's still in the research phase. But, uh, but the wind industry also took around 40 years to develop, right, to be this cheap. So I think to fill that gap, it will take some few years. Getting into mass production is very important and this needs higher margins because you need to build the supply chains, you need to build the factories of supply chains and so on and so forth. So that is just, as in every market, um, costs for kicking off. Airborne wind technology will need loads of investment. Not to mention that airborne devices throw up a bunch of regulatory questions around air traffic. So yes, high altitude wind energy could be big, but it still has a long way to go. So we need to explore all options, and this option is one of the, in my view, most promising ones. Every kid can fly a kite, but tapping into the winds up there and bringing their power down to earth takes a lot more. The race for the skies is well underway. So what's your opinion? Is it an overrated technology or a mind-blowing innovation? Let us know in the comments. Like the video and subscribe to our channel. We have new videos for you every Friday.